Ok, so, por último, pero no menos importante, el regalo extra. Joe's Garage. And this is about validación y verificación. A very important activity in all your laboratories. And so we have to look into the definition. What is the difference between validation and verification? And because we started uh, 20 years ago in your laboratories, uh, we had such a, a definition in the ISO 15189 of 2012. <clears throat> it was revised now, but look at this. The validation is confirmation through the provision of objective evidence that the requirements for a specific intended use or application have been fulfilled. Verification is a confirmation through provision of objective evidence that specified requirements have been fulfilled. So now, what is the difference between both? And this was confusing a lot of people um, which I talked to. And so I developed uh, such a, uh, let's say, Joe's Garage. <clears throat> and so my first question is, what is the best car of the world? There could be only one answer from my German view. Of course, it's a Mercedes. The Mercedes is very expensive. So that's why my car is not a Mercedes. It's a Toyota. A Toyota Yaris with a hybrid engine with half of electric and half of benzene. So <coughs> now I will start with my first case study. Um, now I crashed, for example, my Toyota. And so the result is, after this, I have only a half car. All the here on the front was destroyed. But it's much cheaper than the whole car. It's a half car. So you can buy it for half a price. So I ask my friend Joe in his garage, what can I do? Can you repair my Toyota here? And he said, ah, no, but what we can, we can expand your Toyota, maybe like this. So you can use a half Toyota here and then maybe fix it to such a, um, another equipment. And so you can drive in this way. <clears throat> I said, okay, but this looks very strange. And what about the rain coming inside? <clears throat> okay. And so. Joe said, okay, let's do following. Let's wait for another half car like this. So you can see here in the front, everything is okay, only on the back side. <clears throat> and what I can do in my garage, I can put them together. So this is a half part of the car which was crashed in the front. And this is another car which was press on the back and we put them together and the result would be this one. Voila! This is Joe's Mercedes. Let's say we can use the front of a Mercedes and your Toyota and combine them and then you have a Mercedes. Oh, that uh, looks a little bit strange. Uh, but he said, oh, girl, but it will drive. It's a, it's a whole car. It's no problem. And there's an advantage. If you drive with the car, the street and all. So everybody will see in the front, oh, Manfred is driving a Mercedes. And they, oh, yes, it looks nice. Very expensive Mercedes. And maybe later on, the back side, maybe they have not seen the back side. Um, okay, said Joe, but uh, is it legal to use such a car? 
what about the license of this car? <clears throat> so Joe said, yes, look at this. We call it validation. To um, sell such a Mercedes, which costs maybe 100,000 US dollar, you need a validation of all your components and all your parts inside. Everything must be checked and tested against the performance and functions and so on. And it makes it very expensive. So we call it validation. And the traffic authority ask for these validation files to give a license to give a registration of this new model of the car. Okay. And Joe, as I your friend, I will offer you the Mercy Yuta for 10,000 US dollar. And I produced this Mercy Yuta by myself. I'm the producer. Um, I said, yes, but uh, you are the producer of this Mercy Yuta. But what about your validation? Is it validated? Is it registered, licensed by the authority? Will it be in the future? Yes, he said. I know the problem, but let me see what should be done. So I have a friend in the authority for traffic uh, licensing, and I can give me a copy of a Mercedes. And the Mercedes validation file contains 20,000 pages. Okay, because I use a half part of the Mercedes, so I can use a validation file of Mercedes. And in this traffic department, there's also the um, department for the Toyotas. And in the Toyota, we have also such a validation file of 15,000 pages. So you copied me this file, and then I produced a combined validation file for my Mercedes, which contains part of Mercedes file and the part of Toyota file. And now I can present you my validation file for Messi Yota of 20,000 pages in one uh, documentation. Oh, <clears throat> so that means um, this uh, Messi Yota is, would be legal? Yes, because it's validated. I thought, I don't believe it that it's validated. It looks so strange. And why is it not done by all the other producers with the damaged cars? So let's have a look into the standard, what is written about uh, requirements for... Manfred, can you go uh, a little more slower? Okay. Yes. So, but I can continue? Yeah. Yes, let's please. have a look to the file. Um, not so to the standard for this validation. And Joe said, Look at this. There's a note number three on this written validation is always a balance between costs, risks, and technical possibilities. So I reduced the costs by combining two half cars. So I described my risk in the validation files and I presented you my technical possibilities to fix these two cars together. Oh, I said, but this is from 2005. What about the requirements in 2017 on the standard 17025? So we looked into the validation clause and there was written the performance characteristics of validated methods as assessed for the intended use shall be relevant to the customer's needs and consistent with specific, uh, specified requirements. So Manfred, this is relevant to your needs, to your customers' needs. You need a cheap car, but with a Mercedes part. So that's what I have produced. And now the specified requirements, so it's fixed in my validation file. So what is the problem? Uh, I said, yes, I'm not sure that this is a totally validated car. So, and now normally it's a question 
to all the students, what do you think? Is it enough to combine two validation files of Mercedes and Toyota together to a new validation file for the Mercedes? Or is something missing? What is maybe not validated? Can somebody answer? Or write it in the so chat? In the chat, the, please. Something is disturbing me on the Mercy Yota. Maybe also for you, it's something not correct. What do you think? You can write it in. Ah, I see the Kalidat. Yes, but the Kalidat is perfect. It's Mercedes half and Toyota half, and both have excellent Kalidat. Maybe, of course, these are used cars, crashed cars, but. Yeah, um, Pablo said, yeah, what about the Estandares? Yes, of course, the Mercedes was built by standards, international standards, and was validated against the standard requirements. And the same was done with Toyota. So both is validated, is based on standards, and so I put them together. And now, what is the problem? Verification. Yes, verification is a question for the next uh, slide. But at the moment, we have to think about what is the problem with this validation? <clears throat> Are you missing something in the car? Messi Yota don't have specific requirement. Okay, Sabina said yes. Um, everything is, but has specific requirements filled by Mercedes and also for Toyota. So I don't see any specific requirements. Ah, now Daniel wrote me, each one is good separately. Yes, that's what also Joe said. But we don't know how they behave together. It's like Frankenstein. What about your new performance? Yes, I think he's on the right way. Uh, the performance normally is tested by crash tests. So we have crash tests of Mercedes and we have crash tests of Toyota. And both have excellent results. But we don't know what is the result of the Mercedes Toyota crash test. And I think the weak point here is the interface between Mercedes and Toyota, the connection. The connection was not yet validated. It's new. How they are connected by cables, by material, by steel bars and what else. Um, is this connection stable enough for a crest test? And that's why I'm so a little bit skeptic that this Mercedes will survive a crash test because we have validation files for all the parts, all the components, but not yet for this connection between the two half cars. So this is validation. We have combined equipment in your laboratory that let's say I one analytic device with a computer. So. But the computer was not built for this analytic device. And maybe the analytic device was not built and constructed for a computer connection. So if you in your laboratory connect a computer to this analytic device, you are a new producer. And maybe the equipment is validated and your computer also is validated, but the connection between both 
is not validated. What about the data transfer? What about the performance of this data connection and uh, electrical hazards maybe by occurrence uh, between the two equipment? This needs additional validation. It's the same as you combine a Mercedes with a Toyota happens if you combine an elect uh, a laboratory uh, device with a, a computer which is not yet foreseen for this connection. <coughs> yes, we need a company to validate the Frankenstein. Pablo, you are right. Uh, this company is normal uh, our um, test centers uh, like TÜV, TUV, the uh, prepare such a um, um, validation or other service providers, maybe also in your country. But what you need is a governmental registration by your traffic uh, administration that this is now a legal construction. Yes. So but the question is, what about the verification? So I uh, ask you, uh, so, okay. Uh, but I need now verification. And uh, how shall I use this car? Yes, uh, Joe said, yes, of course. You can get the user manual of the Mercedes and I can delete all the pages for the uh, backside of the car. And I will give you the, uh, oh, you have the quality manual and let's say the user manual of the Toyota. And maybe you don't need the parts for the front half of the car. And if you combine the two user manuals, you have a manual which describes in detail how to use my Mercedes in practice. That means I want to know what are the requirements now to use such a validated uh, system. <clears throat> Um, for example, uh, verification to start with my Mercedes Yoda is at first, what about my tires? What about the air pressure? What about gasoline? What about uh, oil for the engine? Um, what about my constitution? What about my uh, drinking alcohol? Drinking alcohol? So that means it's not allowed to drive a car. This is part of my verification list, checklist, and many other things. Um, to use a validated equipment, or also such a combination of validated equipment, you need special verification lists, how to use now, how to start the, um, the use of this car. And so everything should be written. What is uh, necessary for maintenance, for example, for spare parts. All these are parts of your verification list. So this is not the, uh, re uh, the res responsibility of the producer. He has no influence to your um, alcohol drinking and no influence to the pressure of your tires. Uh, so this is your responsibility as the user of an equipment, but the producer has to give you such a verification checklist. And this is normally done by the user manual where it's written what maintenance is necessary and what should be done before you start. Check your lights and so on. So that's the way. So it's not enough that I can use a Mercedes um, user manual and the Toyota manual, because um, this is not a, a legal connection and not a validate connection between uh, all the electrical and mechanical combination. Yes, this was validation and non-validation by cars, but maybe it's more difficult or more complex in your laboratories. So now the new standard, ISO 17025, has changed the definitions. Verification, a validation is a verification 
where the specified requirements are adequate for an intended use. That means the specific requirements for my Mercedes Iota uh, should be adequate for my intended use as a driving a car. And the verification is a provision of objective evidence that a given item, my Mercedes Iota, fulfills specified requirements, the specified requirements of the traffic administration in the government. And look at the clause 7.2.2.2. When changes are made to a validated methods, this is important also for your laboratory, the influence of such changes should shall be determined and where they are found to affect the original validation, a new method validation shall be informed. So what does it mean in your laboratory? Um, all this equipment, laboratory equipment, is validated for an altitude um, of 2,500 meters. So if you have a laboratory much higher, 3,000 or 4,000 meters in the Cordilleras, then your methods are not anymore validated because there are changes which can influence the air pressure, can influence the performance of your equipment. So you have to again validate your laboratory equipment against this uh, higher altitude in your laboratory. Or another thing, um, maybe your laboratory equipment is validated for a specific temperature range. So let's say from five degrees to 25 degrees. Um, <clears throat> and now your equipment is working in a high temperature area and you have a temperature of 30 degrees in your equipment because the sun is shining directly on your equipment surface, then this equipment is not anymore validated for the use. So you have to, uh, uh, to analyze what is the effect of this higher temperature on the performance of your measurements. Or in the strong winter, if the temperature is below five degrees, for example, it's frozen because maybe the window is broken or something. So what happens now with your chemical reactions and the analysis, analysis in your equipment? So that means the original validation is not valid anymore. And also they used um, the clause 7223, the performance characteristics of validated methods as assessed for the intended use shall be relevant to the customer's needs and consistent with specified requirements. That means the performance characteristics are for the intended use to the altitude of 2,500 meters, which is relevant to, let's say, 95 or 99% of the customer's needs. And if you are working maybe in Bolivia, in La Paz, uh, with 4,000 meters or so, you will have a problem uh, with your um, analysis of uh, blood checking and so on. Yes, that's right. Um, I also, um, yeah, requirements that you see, this is also 2012. This, what does it, what is needed for validation of your methods in your laboratory? <clears throat> it's listed in this uh, ISO 15189. So we need information about the measurement trueness, the measurement accuracy, measurement precision, including measurement repeatability and measurement intermediate precision, the measurement uncertainty, analytical specificity, including inferring substances, analytical sensitivity, detection limit, quantitation limit, measuring interval, diagnostic 
specific and diagnostic sensitivity. Um, in this case, um, I have used very often the word uncertainty. Uncertainty is for me, sounds not so good. In German, it's much, um, much poorer. It's called Unsicherheit. And I'm so, I like the Spanish word incertidumbre. Incertidumbre, this is music in the language. And it's much better than uncertainty or uh, Unsicherheit. So that's why I am so a fan from Spanish language and to hear Spanish language. Yes, so it's a lot of work to do. And um, yes, I explain it normally on such an example. There's a policeman and there's a driver woman. <coughs> and now the policeman checks, <coughs> have you drunk alcohol? And this is equipment. It looks like this. This is the alcohol tester. And normally I use this alcohol tester now for a validation procedure. How can we validate this tester that it uh, presents co correct values? And the result is at the end, something like this. And, but this is another lecture. It takes also one hour or more how to detect all these parameters in such an alcohol tester or in your laboratory equipment. So that's why I would like to stop now with my lecture and to say gracias. And if you have questions, please, okay, send me or ask now what we can answer now. Thank you very much for your attention. And it was a pleasure, a great pleasure for me to give you such an advice in a lecture in Chile.